Hello, welcome to this weekend's analysis report. I'd like to go over some currencies this week. Um, first of all, we'll go to the commitment of traders and we'll just uh, check out what's going on there. Okay. So, go long term trend, volume open interest, futures, just currencies. And we'll even do stock indexes because that's something that's on the watch. It's an inverse correlation. Okay, so what's going on uh, in the currency world is the S&P 500, which is right here, uh, is it's really strong right now. It's uh, it's above average. Uh, the Dow Jones, the Russell, S&P 400 is doing pretty strong. Uh, the most bearish currency in the past week has been the Japanese yen with a minus seven and it's a downtrend right now. The next is uh, the Mexican peso, which we don't cover, and the euro. Uh, the Australian dollar picked up a little bit of strength, it's still in a little bit of an uptrend. Um, British pound is retracing uh, more slowly, but it's still a short. Canadian dollar was uh, pretty stagnant. Uh, but still had some uh, some bearish volume. Same with the euro and uh, the Swiss franc uh, lost some uh, volume in open interest this week from last week. Okay, so let's go to the charts, and I'll show you. It's basically the same as last week. The U.S. dollar picked up strength. Uh, the Canadian dollar uh, went. A little bit south and the rest of the currencies went pretty south as well uh, I'll show you uh, sellers came in and uh, a lot of the hedgers insurance policies industries they covered uh, they're coming out with insurance policies um, small speculators for the Australian dollar kind of picked up a little bit, so that's why we were seeing a little bit of open interest, and you see it in the price action right there that did rise this week a little bit, but uh, it pulled back at the uh, on Friday. Uh, luckily, uh, it was a late bloom. Go to the Canadian dollar since it's a commodity currency as well. Uh, we saw a lot of uh, selling action there, and. Uh, we're still seeing a, a stagnant level around the 97 area. Euro, same thing, picked up a little bit more of a shorting pressure, but the 130 level is still needing to be cracked a little bit more. Uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of selling still there. Japanese yen looked like it was going to do a turnaround, and then it just started heading south, uh, picked up more shorting pressure. Uh, small speculators actually came in and bought a little bit from their, or covered their positions from being that short. And Swiss franc is another story. It's a, it's a weaker currency from the euro. Uh, it really saw a lot of shorting this week, and uh, it should be good for next week. Uh, the U.S. dollar index, which is the, uh, the world reserve currency, it's a uh, it's making some headway. It finally closed over 8250 after being under and uh, at par with 8250, which is bullish for it. So we saw a lot of buying action, still selling action from the uh, hedgers, and uh, still some buying action from the small speculators. So we'll go to the New Zealand dollar, which we don't really cover too much, but still interesting to uh, it's still sitting at the 82 level needs to be broken um, yeah the buyer is slightly it's not too much just a little uh, little action there it's not much happening there um, what we can do is we can go to uh, well this is the options the daily options that show you the open interest and uh, volume, see which contracts are the most liquid. Um, just like the Australian dollar, like we expected, saw a minus uh, 2700 uh, change 
from uh, things. So the trend is is uh, is pretty stagnant. Um, won't go down to a lot of them. Japanese yen, which as I looked at, saw a lot of uh, this is a pretty pretty bearish action in the yen. While the March contracts are are being flipped over, so we're seeing a lot of uh, people go to the June contracts because that's the next option expiration month uh, where the liquidity and the volatility will be. So I switched all my contracts over to that. Um, so that's that, and uh, we'll go to the charts. So the next level for the Australian dollar is the 102 level, and it needs to be cracked. Uh, next level to break for the US dollar is 83, it's sitting at 82.73, the cash index. And we're seeing still a pickup in uh, the MACD, and uh, you know, it was kind of bearish a little bit all week, and then it, at the end of the week it really picked up, so you're seeing kind of a, an upswing on that. The trend is still strong, uh, uh, going to the long side. Um, US dollar saw a lot of bullish action. People didn't know what to think about the 130 to 140 level. That was, uh, and there's still, still German resistance saying that they don't want a, uh, a weaker euro because of the, it, it affects the savers and, uh, and, and the pensioners and, and all that. And, uh, uh they're buying, uh, consumer uh, demand and all that so we're seeing a little bit of capitulation happening here and a little bit of uh, downtrending but the the trend is still down uh, as far as we're concerned go to the British pound um, same thing a little bit of capitulation but we saw some more selling pressure this week that came in um, seeing a rising DMI and uh, the trend is still bearish for that. Uh, New Zealand dollar. Uh, oh, I forgot to do the support and resistance here. Okay, so the resistance would probably be around 150. The next level of the break is 148.99. And for the euro, uh, next level is 129.5 for uh, support. And the resistance is at 131.5. Okay, so for the New Zealand dollar, the next resistance is 83.5, and the next level uh, of support is at 81.9 to break. Go to the US CAD. Next level to beat is 103 and hold, and the level of support is 102. So we'll see what happens next week. Uh, use your charts wisely. I usually use a two hour to find out uh, the trend strength um, instead of the four hour, I use that in a, in a complimentary way. But the two hour I find is in the mix of uh, the one hour and the four hour, it's kind of in between, so it, it's, it's what I use. So 93.5 for the CHF this 